Hi friends! I'm Lulu and welcome to Judson Sunday Arts, where kids of all ages can make art that matters. For those of us joining us today with low vision, I'm a white 30-something woman with dark blonde hair and I'm wearing a bright red sweater and there's a big bookcase behind me um, with lots of books and other items as well as some art hanging on the wall. You can also see two doors and maybe a pillow. Today, we're going to write poems with words or pictures. You will need something to write or draw on, like paper or a notebook, and something to write or draw with, like pencils or markers, pens, Really, anything that you have at home and you like to use is fine. Um, and if you use something like a device or um, a tablet to draw or eye gaze technology, it's all good, whatever works for you. If you tuned into Andy's lesson on January 17th, you might remember a book that he read called The Undefeated by Kwame Alexander. The Undefeated is a poem with illustrations by Kadir Nelson that tells and shows the story of the Black struggle for liberation in the United States from slavery until now. It celebrates people we've heard of and people we haven't heard of that fought for equal treatment under the law and in our hearts and minds. When I heard Amanda Gorman recite her poem, The Hill We Climb, at the inauguration of President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, I thought of The Undefeated Maybe you will too. Today, we're going to watch and listen to The Hill We Climb and make art inspired by it. While you listen, notice what words and phrases stand out. When does she repeat herself? What images come to mind as she speaks? If it helps to write these down or draw the pictures while you're listening, please do. And for a visual description before I start the video, Amanda is a dark-skinned 22-year-old black woman. She stands in front of a podium with two microphones in front of her, and her hair is braided and pulled into a high bun. There are gold beads in her hair, and she wears a red headband, gold earrings, and a bright yellow jacket. As she recites, she gracefully gestures with her arms and hands, and will also see people who came to the inauguration. Here we go. Mr. President, Dr. Biden, Madam Vice President, Mr. Emhoff, Americans and the world. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never ending shade? The loss we carry a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace in the norms and notions of what just is, isn't always just is. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gaze not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. 
that even as we grieved, we grew, that even as we hurt, we hoped, that even as we tired, we tried, that we'll forever be tied together, victorious, not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That is the promised glade, the hill we climb, if only we dare it, because being American is more than a pride we inherit. It's the past we step into and how we repair it. We've seen a forest that would shatter our nation rather than share it, would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy. And this effort very nearly succeeded. But while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith we trust, for while we have our eyes on the future, our history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption. We feared it at its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour, but within it we found the power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert, how could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be, a country that is bruised but whole, benevolent but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burdens, but one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with every breath from my bronze pounded chest. We will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the gold limbed hills of the west. We will rise from the wind swept northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the lake rimmed cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun baked south. We will rebuild reconcile and recover in every known nook of our nation, in every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid. The new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Yes. I like to snap my fingers when I listen to poems, but if you don't like the sound of snapping, regular hand claps, or silent ASL applause are great ways to show your appreciation, whether you're with the person or with yourself at home. So how did that poem make you feel? What words or images stood out? What do you think the title, The Hill We Climb, means. If you said that it's a metaphor, you're right. A metaphor is when we describe something, but we mean something else. So hills that have a slight incline might be easy to climb, but some hills are really steep and a lot harder to climb. So in the hill we climb, Gorman isn't talking about how she just walked up a hill one day with some friends and had a picnic. She's talking about the struggle for equitable human rights and inclusion. She's talking about the freedom fighters that we know about and that we've never heard of, like in the book, The Undefeated. People who have worked together to make the world a place where everyone belongs and is celebrated. So what can we do? We can make art that celebrates that. 
So now it's art making time. What does a world where everyone belongs look like? What does it feel like? How hard will it be to make that world? Use these questions and the things that you noticed in Amanda's poem to write your own poem or draw pictures that show us this brave world. You could spend five minutes or a whole day writing and drawing it out. If you love what you made, send it to me so I can feature it on another edition of Judson Sunday Arts. Amanda Gorman is the youngest inaugural poet in U.S. history. Maybe the next one could be you. Be safe, wear your masks, and happy art-making friends. See ya.